Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, let's pay respect before we start by reciting Namotasa three times together. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambutasa. Homage to the sublime, the victorious, the totally self enlightened one. Okay, everyone. So last time we have finished uh, looking at all the beautiful Chattasikas, including the universal ones and also the occasional ones. So we have basically uh, finished with all the 52 Chattasikas. Today, we are going to start with a little bit uh, more uh, exploration about knowing and understanding. We're going to look at uh, three um, phenomena, uh, two mental factors and one uh, vinyana, and to see what are the difference. Now, the first one is sanya perception. Remember, this is a universal chattasikas that is um, ethically variable. No, so it arises with any kind of chitta, all kinds of consciousness. There is always a perception, and then the second one is vinyana, which is uh, a synonym of chitta, meaning consciousness, right? And then we have panya. So we are going to explore a little bit more about these three today, uh, which is wisdom, right? Panya. Okay. So if you see these three English words, the meaning, like um, the translation, perception or consciousness and wisdom, they are like some three random things, right? <laughs> a little bit, although they might be related, but a little bit random. But if you look at the pan, uh, the Pali word, then you see sanya, vinyana, panya, and then they all have a nya right? And this nya is actually in Pali, this root means to know. So all these three, they know something, they know something about the object, but the, their mode of knowing is different. So Sanya also knows, uh, Chita also knows, Panya also knows, but how are they different? Uh, and what do they have in common? So today we are going to uh, take a look at this a little bit. Okay, now let's go to uh, Sanya first. Now, sanya, uh, it knows, is the knowing of the object. But here, it means just the perception of the object. So, sanya, remember, when we studied the four um, devices, then sanya, it makes notes, right? Uh, it makes marks, like say, okay, the sanya, when it sees the object, then it knows uh, the color, the shape, oh, this is what, and this is what. So, sanya, sanya's knowing is... Uh, by making marks, so it knows. But there is one thing about sanya, then it just know the it knows as a perception of the object, but it may be right or it may be wrong. So sanya sees something and then it, it knows how its shape and all oh, this is a snake, but actually it's a rope, so it's possible there is wrong sanya also. Yeah. So this is as much that much uh, sanya perception knows. Then how about vinyana? Now, vinyana, which is the synonym of chitta, is just the awareness of the object, right? But vinyana can know a little bit more. So apart from knowing the uh, shape and the color uh, of, of the object, um, sanya, uh, I mean, vinyana can also know the three characteristics of the object. Um, do you know the three uh, universal characteristics? Maybe, um, I think most of you have uh, already uh, studied about it. Now, so just let's just take a look of the three universal characteristics and see what are they, yeah? Just a little revision. Now, before, when we look at the different uh, Chetasikas, we see that they all have um, have a, their own characteristic, right? So that characteristic is called Sabawalakana, individual characteristic. For example, when we were looking at uh, Loba, at greed, so it is like sticky and uh, uh, the craving of the things, right? So it has its own characteristic. And Dosa has its own characteristics. So all, all uh, objects or all uh, phenomena has their own uh, individual characteristic. But all conditioned things have three common um, characteristics. Those are called the Samanya Lakana, no? universal characteristic. And the first one of the three universal uh, characteristic is impermanence, Anicca. So what is Anicca? Anicca actually... 
well, as uh, as we all know, the impermanence. We all know that things are not permanent, no, and it is quite obvious, and we see it all the time. Although most of the time we forget that things are impermanent. Like the Buddha said, the sabe sankara anicca. So all conditioned things are impermanent. Just because we do not really understand that, then we attached and uh, attachment and clinging arise. No? So um, impermanence can be seen in our everyday life, like uh, from uh, children uh, growing every day, every day and becoming um, old, becoming old. Uh, but not only in living beings and even in things that things are like a house or things that seem so solid, it also keeps changing, right? Um, well, getting older or in case of a fire or anything, it, things keep changing. Nothing is for permanent. And how about health? We all know that sometimes we are healthy, but sometimes we get sick. So nothing really stayed the same all the time. So that's anicca, that's impermanence. Sometimes we are healthy, sometimes we get sick, and eventually we will die too. So things do not always happen the way we want them to be. So anicca, anicca, and anicca is always happening. And even sometimes even things does go well and it happens the way we want it to be, but still it might, it does not last that we all know, right? Like a vacation or an ice cream and even our health, our youth, um, eventually is going to change. So that's the first universal characteristic of all conditioned things, anicca. And whatever is anicca, whatever keeps changing, that it cannot be satisfactory, right? That, that comes to the second characteristic, that's dukkha, right? Okay, now dukkha, this word is a little bit tricky because previously we have seen in Vedana, the mental feeling, then dukkha can mean uh, already there are two meanings, right? Remember when it is associated with the body consciousness that dukkha is uh, mental pain associated with the body, right? That's one kind of dukkha. And then we have a dhamanasa, which is um, uh, the mental suffering kind of the dukkha. Uh, also, it can include that. And now here, this dukkha in the tilakana, in the three universal characteristic, is even more than that. Many, uh, I mean, uh, the meaning is deeper than that. Most of the time, um, it is translated as uh, suffering, but um, I would prefer the word unsatisfactoriness, actually, because the word suffering um, is too limited. And then we sometimes we feel like it's really painful, really suffering that we associate with this word, right? But actually dukkha is whatever is um, changing, keeps changing and it cannot be uh, satisfactory. So it is in this term, it is called dukkha. Um, for example, uh, Lady Seadoji, Lady Seadoji is one um, um, very respected Seado in Burma and a very uh, good teacher and scholar and a teacher of meditation as well. So he says, uh, I'm quoting in one of uh, his books, it says, uh, by this dukkha, we mean a state of pearl and danger without peace, security or blessing. So basically, um, samsara, no? So it's all, uh, every, all conditioned things are uh, suffering in this sense. It in includes the five aggregates and, and other things. So it's not really just the suffering that we, that we uh, usually associate with the English word. Now, whatever is impermanent, it cannot be satisfactory, right? So besides birth, aging, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, despair, beside this are dukkha, this is what we usually call dukkha. And what else is dukkha? Let's take a look. In the Samyutta Nikaya, the Buddha said, association with the unbeloved is also a kind of dukkha. So meeting with someone that we don't like or having to do things that we don't want or uh, like this child, maybe maybe his mom asked him to eat a broccoli or something. So having something that we don't want is um, also dukkha. And the separation from the loved um, things that we want, person that we love, that's also dukkha. And not getting what is wanted or what one desire is also dukkha. So in the Samyutta Nikaya, it is said, uh, birth is dukkha, 
Aging is dukkha, death is dukkha, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair are dukkha. Association with the unbeloved is dukkha, separation from the loved is dukkha, not getting what is wanted is dukkha, and in short, the five clinging aggregates are dukkha. So dukkha, is, you see, is much uh, wider here in terms of this definition. Uh, so instead of using the any English translation words, you will usually just keep it as dukkha, no? just to understand uh, all that it includes. Now, the, so with these two, uh, impermanence, anicca and dukkha, so if things are impermanent and unsatisfactory, that means we have no control over them, right? Agree? So if we have no control over something, something that we have no control over, can we call it I or me or mine? No, right? So that comes to the third universal characteristic, which is the non-self. That's the anatta, right? Okay, so things, although we think that this is I, this is me, and this is he, this is she, and then this is, uh, this is my water bottle, and this is so all the things that we think is I, me, and mine, um, conceptual, well, in, in daily terms, in the concept, yes, we do have to use these terms uh, to communicate, but we really have to um, always uh, try to have this wisdom to understand that everything is just a process, is the mind process going on, the, the body process going on, everything is going by cause and effect, cause and effect, not really because of I, because of me and because of mine. Yeah. So these three are called the universal characteristics, anicca, dukkha and anatta, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness and non-self. Okay, so this is just a very brief um, uh, reminder of uh, these three characteristics that you might have already studied before. And we are talking about this because we have been talking about vinyana. So now let's going, going back to what we have been talking about. Vinyana, besides uh, it is capable of knowing uh, the color, the shapes and the things, it is also capable of knowing these three characteristics, anicca, dukkha and anatta. But of course, not all the time, right? Because if every chitta that arises understand the three um, characteristics, then we would be very wise all the time. Yeah. So sometimes it's a, so it, I mean, chitta is capable of um, uh, of uh, seeing, of knowing the three characteristic, but but uh, not all chittas and not all the time. Uh, uh, it it, um, it it has this kind of knowing. Yes, Claudia. Yeah, my question is, uh, what um, is the factor that will make us believe that there is a self? Vedana, I think that is the more prominent sometimes. Mm, because, uh, yeah, yeah. So because, you know, like um, before that I start to learn this teaching, um, well, I was thinking that there was a self and still now, uh, I understand it men mentally, mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes I get very hooked with the mm -hmm. uh, feeling. So, you know, like with the believing that there is something, right? Mm -hmm. So what is this perception? Why is it so strong? Mm. Yes, actually, uh, the most um, uh, obvious um factor that contribute this to, to this um, uh, not understanding reality as it really is, is obviously uh, moha, right? Delusion, ignorance. And of course, we also have wrong perception. We are seeing things, we are seeing non-permanent things as permanent. We are seeing uh, dukkha, we are seeing dukkha as sukha. We are seeing unsatisfactory things as satisfactory. And because of that, we think things are permanent, and then we think that uh, uh, things are brings uh, uh, ultimate happiness and and all this. Because of that, then we loba uh, clinging and um, uh, attachment also arise, right? So um, now you are saying that uh, we understand this intellectually that that uh, there is a non-self, that there's only just mind and uh, body, nama and rupa uh, running in its own process, but we don't really, really understand. But that's okay because we are not there yet. You remember uh, DT, this wrong view is eradicated only in the first stage of enlightenment, right? 
So we still have a lot of work to do until we arrive at there. So there, we really, really understand that there is a no self until then. But now we are just uh, studying, practicing, and um, uh, accumulating uh, wisdom little by little, little by little, until the first stage of enlightenment, maga arise, then this maga can totally eradicate this wrong view. Then by the time we will understand that there is only my uh, cause and effect, uh, nama and rupa, but there is no self there. So, um, so the most important factor here is, uh, of course, uh, moha. But as you said, feeling, because we have feeling, then sometimes we believed. And then because of feeling, even in the dependent origination, because of feeling, attachment arise, right? So so it is all linked. But because of moha and because of loba, then it all continues and continues, right? Uh, is that okay, Claudia? Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so let's continue. Now, we see that vijnana, citta, uh, consciousness, it is capable of understanding not only the shape and the color of the object, but it is also uh, capable of understanding the three um, characteristics of the object. But one thing it cannot do is that uh, it cannot eradicate uh, defilements because that is the work of panya. So vijnana, although it can know, but it cannot eradicate it. So only with wisdom uh, can defilements be eradicated. Um, panya, so wisdom, besides knowing the shape and the color and all these things, it can penetrate to the true nature of things. It can un understand the, the three characteristics, the four noble truths. And, uh, and then with, it, with that wisdom that is uh, being cultivated, it can... Uh, eradicate defilements and um, bring us to the ultimate goal, right? So this is the differences between these three kinds of knowing. Okay, so uh, Sanya, it knows the marks, it knows, uh, it it, it understands the, the object in terms of the shape and the color, and so it's just a perception, and it can be right and it can be wrong. Now, Vinyana, it can know a little bit more. It knows also, it can also know the three characteristics, but it cannot eradicate defilements. So only Panya is possible to, to eradicate defilements. Now, when Panya arise, although, I mean, Panya is not uh, separated from Vinyana and with, from Sanya, because whenever Panya arise, it always arise together with Vinyana and Sanya. Remember, Sanya is a universal Chetasika, right? So whenever there is a Chitta that is associated with wisdom, because wisdom is only one uh, uh, chitta sika, right? It's a chitta sika, so it must always arise with, of course, with the chitta. So uh, these three, actually, when panya arise, all of them, they arise together. But their uh, function uh, or the way they know the object uh, is a little bit different. Now, it is um, these this, uh, three... Um, the difference between them is illustrated uh, with uh, uh, a comparison to the knowing of a coin. Now, let's take a look of this example. Now, there is a coin, a gold coin. Uh, Sanya is compared to a little child. So when a child it picks up a coin or many coins, then what the child knows is like, oh, this is something wrong, it's hard, I oh, can play with it, and it makes sounds, and uh, I can bite it. So that's all the child knows about the coin, yeah? So sanya, uh, the knowing of sanya is something like that. Uh, that much as the child knows. Uh, but then the child might not know that you can use this coin to buy something, right? Okay, now how about Vinyana? Now, Vinyana is now compared to a villager that knows that uh, besides knowing that the coin is round, is hard, he also knows that with this coin, then it is valuable. When I go to the market, I can exchange it for something. But the villager might not know whether this gold coin, uh, how... Um, like how much gold is in there, if it is genuine, like totally real 100% gold, or if some other metal is uh, mixed with it, or the value is uh, uh, not so high or whatever. He, he just know that the coin with this coin, I can buy something. Yeah. So this much Vinyana knows, a little bit more than, than Sanya. Yeah. Now Panya is 
um, compared to an expert, to a money changer, uh, because it's his, his professional, right? So he knows whether this coin is real or is not. And then he knows like uh, what year, uh, where this is made. Um, then so his knowledge of this coin is thorough with regard to, to uh, all the aspects of it, no? So Panya is compared to the uh, the expert, not the money changer or the um, uh, coin uh, expert here. So these three, Sanya, Vinyana, and Panya, uh, are compared to a child, a villager, and an expert. Um, now, in, in regard to ultimate reality, so um, Panya, what Panya knows is like the expert. It knows about it. What can it know? It can know the cause and effect. It can know the ultimate reality of Nama and Rupa, the Four Noble Truth, the Noble Eightfold Path, and all these things, right? So uh, may we all become an expert about the true nature of things, just like the money changer about the Dhamma. So uh, with that much wisdom, uh, darkness or delusion, we have no chance, right? Okay, so now, so this is the three, um, uh, the differences about these three uh, phenomena that all they they all knows perception they all know perception, uh, vinyana and panya. Okay, so with this, we have officially finished with all. We come to the end of all the chetasikas. Let's stop here today. So and we'll then. do a revision from uh, for next class and make sure everyone uh, understands uh, everything that 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 we have already studied uh, before we go ahead. Okay, before we enter chapter, uh, I mean the associations. Okay, so let's uh, share merit and dedicate our effort for the attainment of Nibbana. Okay. Itam no punyam Nibbana sa pacheo ho tu. Itam no punyam Nibbana sa pacheo ho tu. Itam no punyam Nibbana sa pacheo ho tu. Itam no punyam sabasatanam pajima. Itam no punyam sabasatanam pajima. Itam no punyam sabasatanam pajima. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay, thank you everyone. We'll see you again next Saturday. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Yes. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you, see you.